And I'll think to you all, you shouldn't spoil yourself. On times you overcome that feeling, what do you do to overcome that feeling of, I deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. And I've worked damn hard to get here. I, I really just see that. I see the work pay off or something. Like I got I to gotta feel it in my soul like I did enough this week. Or I really maximized this 24 hours to where I could just sit back right now. You know, I gotta feel, I gotta see some results. I gotta see some, I gotta, yeah, I gotta see it. I've had a close video on the fed, so it doesn't get away. You did this in there at all? Put the whole thing, put that whole thing in there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> We live? We've been live. Uh, since you put that whole joint on, we've been live. There's some stuff on here. I don't know if it's going to clean up. I will warn you. We'll try and see, man. You know, we're not here to make the cleanest sneaker. It's about the story. Oh, back. Okay. So what do you expect from your everyday shoe? I, I expect to catch eyes, man. When, when I went, when I walk out, I need, I need, I want uh, women and men looking at the shoes like, damn, I want that pair. Or... You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like old old women, grandmas and grandpas to be like, that's a nice shoe there. <laughs> you know? like, my mom swear I got new shoes every time she see me, but she just don't pay attention. Like, bro, she but the shoes clean, so that's why she think that. Yeah. So. You know, I I typically don't clean my shoes like I used to. In high school, uh, shoes mattered a lot more. But now, you know, as adults, we're like, you yeah, know, just, you know, it don't matter as much, but it still matters to have some clean kicks. Like, that that never goes out of style. And it says a lot about you, you know, depending on where you're at. Well, you said, you know, I thought she was about to be like, you know, black people. <laughs> where did you get your swag from? Uh, where did I get my swag from? Hmm. Originally my pops, and then I realized his swag was outdated. Mm. So, my friends in high school, shout out my boy Rock. Um, Rock, yeah, Rock taught me a lot about shoes in high school. I didn't know about shoes like that till like tenth grade. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I, uh, it developed. Mm -hmm. High school to college, I still ain't have swag for real in college, I felt like. But would you say swag is inherited or is it practice? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's inherited. But you can practice it. And, but I think it's something that you just born with, something really. But you can learn it over time with the right people around you. Or if you look up to the right people. But yeah, if you, you can um, you can put some swaggy stuff on, and still not be swaggy just because you not you know you're 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 you not swaggy. You like, you can put the swag on. Though. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, no, I got you. Would you say folks think you can purchase swag? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you can. You could throw it all all the the high fashion on, but if you can't wear it right. You probably may still, you may not still get the girl you want or, you know that. You know, it's just gonna look like, you know, don't, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, it gotta be in you, not on you. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's definitely what she said. It's actually coming up a little bit, pause. Being from the city, that starts dressing from the feet up. How important are sneakers? Oh, they're like, I would say 90% of the fit. That's my opinion, at least 80%, at least. The kicks are fly. You can wear a basic shirt, basic jeans. You fly though, because them shoes. You know that? 
That's the statement maker when you walk in. The first thing a girl looks at when you walk in, yo, she. And then, you know, you can, like, I've witnessed it. Like, I've had dirty shoes on. I, I worked an event in LA. I was uh, doing this some temp val valet job for this uh, black market event. Super dope. A uh, beautiful event. Um, I had some fake Nike boots on because I have real Nike boots, but I bought some cheaper, like, off brand boots. And this girl said, oh, okay, I see you with the Nike boots. And I said, I said, Burr. then she looked closer. She said, wait a minute, those aren't Nike. I said, damn, I said, I had to explain it to her. Like, look, these are just the work boots, da, da, da. She like, mm. And I lost it. I could have got her number that day, you know, if I, you know, if I wanted to, but it was, it was no chance after that. At receipts that day, have you ever been caught slipping? Nah, that was a reminder. <laughs> Since that day, I've been on my P's and Q's. I look in the mirror like, all right, today, like, you know, every day I try to dress like I'm somebody because I am. And people treat you how you, your appearances, you know, they, that first appearance, that first, um, what's the word? Impression. First impression is everything. You don't got a chance to make a second one a lot of times. So if you come in on point, you know, like my boy Jigga, he always walk coming places fresh. So people, that's that's what they know him. They like, oh yeah, Jigga, he fresh to death. He they gonna treat him like he a star because he dressed like one. How do these values translate to your music? Uh, I pop my shit in the songs. I I speak on it. I I. I I, I, it's a swag in my rap now that you can't buy. You gotta like really live it. The shit that I be saying, you can't, you can't make it up. And that's why people feel the music though, because they, they know it's real. They ain't know. Oh, I'm bad. I'm just playing a little water. We do it, man. Do what you gotta do, man. Including some sinkers, bro. You see it? How would you say your sound has evolved going from DC to LA? Mm, I would say uh, it's evolved a lot, really. My sound, um, my my quality, just overall skills have been polished. Um, I've been, you know, as you know, LA is the hub of of uh, entrepreneurs and talent and and dream chasers. So in the midst of all of these art artistic people, I, I still walk in rooms and stand out and seem to be further ahead, you know? So I, I feel like um, being out there just kind of showed me where I'm at in the playing field and then also showed me people like I'm look, I need to like learn from or be more like, you know? Or just trying to come, you know, like I'm doing my own thing, but you got to have people you can look up to and mentor that's doing it, you know, the right way. So it's, it's really developed my sound to a whole nother level. As both an artist and a producer, what rules have you followed to protect your craft? What rules? Mm -hmm. Just give it three. Make it simple. I would say one rule would be Number one, stay authentic. Like when I'm making, when I'm putting lyrics down, I always make sure I speak from the heart and not tell anybody else's story. Try to tell my story. Number two, don't be afraid to get um, insight on your music from others, especially women. Because if you got women listening to your music that you're winning, most of the time. Uh, number three, mm, don't box yourself in like to one thing. Try different things out because you never know what really may be the thing that takes it to the next level. So I try not to like box myself in or like, you know, until you find out what the people want. Keep trying stuff. This 
You know, one day I could be a reggaeton artist, next day a hip hop, next day EDM, whatever. But you know, say that EDM track is what takes off. Let's let's rock that with. That's how I feel, man. But still, just stay true to you in the process, like, you know. I'm a, I'm about too far off. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm used to this town. So, before 2020, you got to experience Don't Mute DC. And now in 2024, being around the way, you got to see the Kendrick and Drink Beef close up on the LA side. What was that like? So, yeah. Honestly, it was a super dope experience. I really, um, you know, I saw the power that Kendrick has up close. And just the the whole the whole culture of West Coast, like the Crip walk in and the the um, just just being lived like I actually stay in, you know I don't know the different codes of like Bloods and Crips or anything like that, but it's just like you know it's a real culture out there that you know Kendrick was able to bring both sides together and you know join together and celebrate that day. It wasn't. This very uh, iconic thing that he did with that song, and every club that you know anywhere it plays out there, it it's an instant bump. Like even out here, all over the world, really, but out LA, it's it's like ooh, hits different. Cause I know that those people when they're dancing to that, they really, they really do that dance. So they, I mean, they, ain't, they ain't doing it for fun. They, I mean, they doing it for fun, but it's something they've been doing. But. <laughs> I still don't know how to do it. But, um, yeah, it was iconic, man. Being game changer. So, uh, rest in peace, Drake. <laughs> I just hear alcohol being poured out in the background on some more soil. <laughs> Yeah, uh, pour the champagne out for him. And, and but that's him. he did. He had a good run. What were three lessons you learned from that side of the culture? Mm, three lessons, mm -hmm. I would say. Well, if I got three in those things. Probably just to be proud of where you're from. Um, I mean, honestly, they they're no they're not much different than DC culture. You know, they born into that, they, they stick by it. Uh, that's about it, really. So right now, you're working on a new project. Something like that. I mean, you got some tracks, that means you got a feature coming out. Definitely, like, I, I, got, I got a catalog of just hits in the vault that, um... I'm now strategically trying to release so I don't give the people too much and then nothing goes overlooked. How important is it to have a controlled release? It's essential. It's it's a game changer. It can really it uh it can really change the volume of people you reach if you if you challenge yourself on that. You know, roll out the right way. If you really have the right pieces together, the right people involved, can make that that moment bigger than than all your other moments. You know, it could be that one that takes it to where now I got ten thousand monthly listeners till I got a hundred thousand monthly listeners, just because of the right rollout. So, something I'm studying until this day. Getting better and better. When it came to reaching back to DC, a lot of establishments were closed, unfortunately, due to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. How has navigating that space back at home been for you, being fresh off the plane? Mm -hmm. You said navigating what? Navigating that space, like trying to figure out establishments, what we're gonna do this rollout, who's still working with who. Right. Um, it's helped me just kind of like pinpoint who, you know, uh, the people I can count on 
the um, re the resources I do have, and then the the investment I need to make that realistically will do make a make a make a change. You know, make a an imprint that can't be ignored. Um, it's really just help me pinpoint like what I need to do to take it to that next level and. You know, patience is a big part of that. Waiting, you're waiting for your your time to shine. Um, but I'm blessed to have a lot of music, so that's why I just con continue to release so I could keep people engaged while I'm really thinking of this master plan to like knock their heads off, or you know, something they can't deny is like you know a classic or something that they want to hear every single day and i got that record already it's just i don't want to give it to them and then get under root, you know it's like let's let's make them wait for those not too long though because life is not promise you know do you know what the right time looks like for your music yeah i got a good idea it's a feeling though it's more of like a feeling like my intuition is strong so i just go i follow that and then I um, have good fa uh, friends and listeners that can give me good advice on which ones stand out the most to them. And that kind of, I, I use their opinions too. Because, um, you know, I could be I could be crazy. Sometimes I make a song and I think it's a hit, you know. I think everything I make is a hit. That's the thing. <laughs> but I do identify the ones that stand out. I, do, I know how to identify it. These are getting squeaky clean. <laughs> Where does your strong belief come from? God. And my family just always telling me, you know, just really pouring positivity into me and strong belief in myself. Before I, you know, before I really believed in it myself, I was like, my family did, so they helped me realize I was uh you know I could do anything you can use the towel to wipe off the bottom of the sneakers and the table okay I bet I make sure to wash all this stuff when it's done so you glue on that bet bet and it's almost at a rigid then yeah actually yeah man it's Big, big, big Rasta is what they say to me now. They like, that's not the little Rasta, that's the big Rasta. Were you ever a little Rasta? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think I was little Rasta at one point, for sure. But in my heart, no, I was always big. But they might have thought I was little. I notice you say they a lot when you speak on how you may be viewed from the outside, how or where are you of the people that are paying attention to your path and where you're headed? Uh, how aware? Probably like 50-50. Because I, I pay attention to who's, you know, I try to look at the analytics or who's really listening. But I, I also just just do, just move and just pray on it and see who, you know, I pray people gravitate to it. I never sometimes know who gravitates to it till. So that day they come up to me and say, yo, like that project, I had that on repeat all month or, you know, that, that song really like was my favorite song, you know? So that, that sometimes I don't know until I get told. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm one, I'm one of those people that kind of tell myself naturally that, you know, like that Kobe mentality, like more. You know, not enough. Like, I, it's, we got to go higher, you know? Still, not to try to down myself, but I'll say, no, nah, you still shitty. You got to get better. You got to get better. Even though somebody may be like, bro, you made it already, you know? Some people would say, I made it. I'm like, oh, I ain't burned my mama's house yet. I didn't make it. How would you define success for yourself? Success is really power. I feel like I could change people's lives by my value and creative, my creativity and 
can like change someone's life. I think that's like success, like some something so big to where like now we're at like to the point where you don't have to introduce yourself anymore. They just know. That's that's success to me. And doing what you love to do. And that's like feeding your family. Success. I like use success to ruin me. What's one of the greatest lessons your family ever taught you? Never quit. Or, and never. Greatest lessons? Mm -hmm. Uh, never talk down on someone like that. Cause they could be one day be up on you. So like, just respect everyone. Like don't, don't like, like the janitor, like treat him with just like you would treat the pre the principal. Don't, don't, you know, cause you never know that, that janitor may be a principal one of the, or you know, you never know. You just never know. <laughs> so that's something bad. That they, they told my dad told me. You should have every no the the no tables turn every day. Turn Treat everybody how you want to be treated, and you never know. You know, just that impact may you know it just could be the connection you needed to take it up a notch. I need to clean this top pocket here. It's like a pocket for your, your money card or whatever. A little blunt rolled for the plug. You know, whatever you see fit. Yeah, like you could put like five pre-rolls in there. Go to the party lit. On LA, they might put a little and then, but not me. <laughs> what does the title Street Lights mean to you? The title means to me, man, it, since I've gotten, since I got a car, um, when I was like 17, mm -hmm. uh, I started listening to music in the car. It kind of was like my first home in a sense before I had a crib. And all I remember is a lot of times, like when I was uh, with my homies or in relationships with girls, like some significant about the street lights at night um, in Tussie and DC. Uh, the night, the street lights come on, it's late, and but we're in the car listening to music, vibing. It's kind of like, you know, I was our first hangout spot before we had a creative. Or even now, it's still like sometimes the, the, the car is just where you end up at at the, at the end of your work day. And the street lights is the only thing beaming down on you. And and this and this song is you know, it is it's a love story. Do you still believe in the car test when it comes to tracks and albums? A thousand percent. <laughs> car test is essential. Like if it's bumping in the car, you you know how it's gonna bump in the club. You know how it's gonna bump one of the headphones. It's like the ultimate test. You just gotta know your car though. You gotta study your car speakers. You can't just hop in a random car and then kind of go off that. You got to really, really know your car speakers. What are things you look for in a good car test? Uh, I look at like what the base is on in the car. So and then see how hard that base is hitting. I look at the treble. Make sure the treble is like maybe two notches up. So they got a little sharpness to it. But if it's the S's and T's is hitting too hard, but the treble's up, it's too sharp. And think, yeah, you just, and, uh, I turn it all the way up to the top notch. If it's going way too loud where you can't even reach the top, you turn that master too high or that limiter. And if it's too low and it's like, dang, like me goes is still louder than me. You got to turn it up some more. So that's, it's an ultimate test. Uh, you could switch out to the other sneaker that joined nice. I'm not a thing. Tip, nice. I'm looking at them like, nah, these colors are hot. And they popping now, better do that. He really brought it back to life on camera. Mm. All right.
Like shoe. If they can be put in. Like, I'm the boy still good. And I, I'm in fact. Shoe. Sweet. For that, I'm at the um, seat with boys. Try to get a stain on the shirt. <laughs> Like, damn, that's, that shrimp was tripping. Man. Nah, I go there in some gym clothes, man. Mm -hmm. I gotta get busy. Yeah. Nah, that's smart. That's yeah. smart. Get, get busy in there. That's man that clears all his meal. Man. So now that you've experienced cleaning all well, your everyday shoes, how would you say you treat yourself in comparison to your everyday shoe? Oops. To be honest with you, you know, I have phases where I treat myself like, you know, I polish myself or I make sure I, um, well, t you know, uh, well, take like, well, you know, I always clean myself like this, but in a sense of sometimes I go through those periods where I don't give a fuck, you know, just going through the motions, really just bag chasing or dream, you know, just really. I might wear the same hoodie three days, like, but I'm, you know, I still put some deodorant on, make sure I'm fresh. But I'm like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the cave, though. I'm, 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 uh, I'm isolated. But uh, it's times there also where I do take the extra initiative to polish myself, take care, you know, the small things. Um, but I always stay fresh, though. That's one thing I can't and be out here musty. But uh, some would say that I need to treat myself more, in a sense. I'm more of the type that feels like, man, I don't deserve this, you know. What I do to deserve, you know, what I do to deserve lobster tails today. You know what I mean? Like, that's how I feel sometimes. Not that lobster tails is like crazy, but I'm just saying like, wow. I'll just eat a bowl of cereal, maybe some oatmeal. Something, you know, something basic. It's more of a celebration meal to me. Now I bake showing off shrimp steak liquor and pasta. <laughs> you feel me now? Yeah. It's like, why should I do this? Like, why am I, you know, you should spoil yourself, but I, I'm, I don't, it, sometimes I don't, I have it, I disagree with it. I don't think you always should spoil yourself. On times you overcome that feeling, what do you do to overcome that feeling of, I deserve to be here mm -hmm. and I've worked damn hard to get here? I, I really just see that. I see the work pay off or something. Like I gotta, I gotta feel it in my soul like I did enough this week or I really maximized this 24 hours to where I could just sit back right now you know I gotta feel I gotta see some results I gotta see some I gotta yeah I gotta see it when it comes to building up this new generation of artists what do you expect from the artists that work with you what do I expect from it? And you? Mm -hmm. Shoot. I pray to be a, someone they could look up to as someone that, um, that's someone that I just unapologetically is done, like my, just being myself, and it works. Yeah, though. It's people that I've done it before, just being them. So I just pray to carry on authentic authentic um, exposure and music like just being real to yourself not following trends or you know really just having my own style having your unique thing and having a, a real passion for it versus like just chasing the bag like really you know, you would record without no money and being involved. Like, you just wake up and want to make music because that's therapeutic. I think it's the, that's what music is, it's therapy. I, I, I record some of the craziest artists. The artists done got shot in the back and the side. 
lost brothers here, lost lost family members there. Got all this trauma, and they come to the studio and they tell me this stuff. Like I like I done known them their whole life, and they they like bro. Like I seen my father get shot at four, and lost them. Like that's how he bro walked in the studio and said that to me. I ain't know what to say. I'm like, damn, bro. I'm like, put that shit on the track. That's what I told him. Shit. You know, I'm, this therapy, this is a therapy session, though. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that, but like, it's real, man. That's where people go to vent. It's the booth. It's the most healing place. Still, therapy, still good, though. Shit, love the therapy. But music is a good start. <laughs> Wouldn't you say you can see the release from the artists who may put their souls into their tracks to bear to hold them onto the pain? Uh, say that again. Wouldn't you say there's a difference that comes about in the artists when they put their soul on the track who mm. bear to holding on to the pain? Yeah, it's a difference. Big difference. It's more vulnerable, though, when you... It's hard to be vulnerable like that for a lot of people. But when they do it, oh, it always has a good turnout. Look at big examples like Rod Wave. You know, he or Juice World, rest in peace, Juice World. Like these guys cry about their pain, and it's brought them so much success. But you know, a lot of people wouldn't drop that type of record being that vulnerable because it's like you don't want to look weak, you know. But it's really a strength. If you if you do it the right way, of course. If you're musically inclined too, like they're both musically inclined, it's, it, it definitely has a crank factor to it. But that is vulnerable music there. That's, I try to drop that. I try to put that in my music with like street lights. That record is super vulnerable. So as of recent, you've gotten a greater opportunity to work with bigger labels and produce music with various artists. Yeah. How has that time been for you? It's been, it's been eye-opening for sure. Just, it's kind of, was premeditated. I feel like just the path that I've been going on just been makes sense. But it's good to see it and like be respected in those rooms. And just, you know, I think it's just the beginning, but yeah, like seeing deposits from from QC or Empire or Sony come to my bank account is like super game changing from just like a regular cash app result or Apple Pay. It's like, hmm, we're doing something different now. I don't know. Can't put my finger on it just yet. It's still new. Would you say that's make you that's made you change the way you do business? It is changing every day, yeah. It's just making me more more professional, look into the business side deeper, um, try to protect myself a little, a lot more, really. Still got more to learn, but I do feel like it's changing the way I do business in a sense of just, just the game, the, the, the industry can be quite grimy if you don't if you're not knowledgeable about your stuff. So they will take advantage of you if you don't know. Or you won't get the money you deserve if you don't speak up. To be honest, you know. You might have wrote a whole song for somebody if you ain't get that agreement that you wrote it. Shoot. So your word versus them. How important is paperwork in the industry? Super important. Especially when money and hits get involved. And the record selling out shows, uh, make is like super, super important, man. But very, very, a lot of people just make music, but don't do the paperwork. So it gets tricky. It don't matter though to really, to that thing's number one charted or top billboard or something, you know, that's when it matters. And I've seen people fall out over it. I've seen people grow from it. I've seen people go to court for it. So I don't touch this shit. Yeah, it gets crazy. So it's good to have the, that those agreements 
you know, before you release uh, stuff like that. People really scanned down there. Yeah, that's the end. So you're gonna have to buy yourself a little cleaning kit for yourself when you own. Ew, and you got some free time. How many how many dirty sneakers you got? <laughs> too many. Okay, too many. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, let's say too many. Yeah. Two million. Let's just buy a new sneaker at the I don't throw I don't want those sneakers away though unless they're like talking to me. How do you go about setting boundaries as an artist? Period. How do I go about it? I really just, you set a price and you stand on it, really. You have to stand on it though. You're gonna get no's, you're gonna get people that's trying to belittle you. You know, I had a guy, an artist talk to me, he said, he said, Rasta, I, I think you only worth $25 an hour to engineer. Because my homeboy, my other homie, does it for $25 an hour. And, you know, you can probably guess what my response was to that. What would you think I said? I'd go get that nigga that. Or I would have said, fuck that. Yeah, I told him. Uh, but why you calling me, you know? Go get him then. And I said, one day, my price, you complain about 50 an hour, which is a, still a hookup, you know, in this sense. Like, I'm still, it's still a super hookup for what I'm getting, what you're getting. Um, but I'm like, one day, this price is maybe 3000 a day. You know? What's, what's going to be, what's going to be the... Shoot, let's say three thousand an hour. Oh, been you know, things, things change. So. They're upset when the other reason the price of the brick is going up. The price keeps going up, and he's like, "Dang, it was it was fifty dollars last week. Why is it sixty five now?" Price go up, bro. If you like the work, keep keep working with me. So I just I had to base them in front of his whole crew, and they all they all knew he was wrong for. Cause they know that well, they would talk to like that. They wouldn't have liked it either. Also, he put himself in that position. To look crazy, look like a clown. Saying that, so, you yeah, know. Since then, he has uh, corrected his, his, his nature or how he talks to me. Cause he know the value I bring. But it's just kind of crazy how people could even think that when try to like, I would never say that to someone. But I mean, it started and stopped with you standing up for yourself. Yeah, I do. If I didn't stand up at that point, uh, I would have been hit like a li little bitch after that. And you know, and there and everybody you know, in that whole situation, it wouldn't have went well. Like would have been downhill. So I was like, oh. So like sometimes you really, I you know, it's like you got your back against the wall against a whole bunch of wolves and down, pull out the line and get bring out the roar. It ain't got to be violent. You know, everything don't got to be violent and we fight it or nothing like that or threats, but it's just respect that they hit us there. I mean, that's, that's all I, that's all I ask for. Will that work? We'll do business. And if it's not respect there, I'm out. Mm. Ain't that a question. What are characteristics you've noticed from having a great client? Ooh, man, great client. Great. Uh, it's like. Just great chemistry, great work, great progress. Uh, it's like a team team effort to like make this thing get bigger. Like it's, it takes a team anyway, but yeah, from a great client, uh, just consistency, growth, and it's kind of like you see the investment, like where it takes their career to like, you know, on the on their creative side, like you're, you're trusting in their creative process and you see where it goes. And I just do my part to help it come to life. When it comes to the infrastructure of BC on the entertainment side versus the infrastructure of LA on the entertainment side, 
what have you come to notice? Uh, LA is more based, like it's more serious over there than DC. DC, yeah, like a lot of the stuff like that goes on in LA, like you won't see that here in DC as far as just the, the opportunities out there, the all the all the record labels are like next to each other. There's so many rooms for opportunity out there as far as just walking running into these these people that are doing it every day versus here it's 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 here but it's not as not as celebrated or it's not as um prevalent. But that also is a um it's like pros and cons to it because in LA if it's if everybody's doing that thing then it's like everybody's doing the same thing. So it was really the best, you know? When you could go to a random city like Ohio or D or DC or, you know, different place somewhere where it's not as, you know, heavy music is celebrated everywhere now, but LA is a different level of competition. So you can take that somewhere else and really shine if you know what you're doing. But, um, LA just has a lot of resources and if you if you got something good you can take off there easy or really plug into the right folk what's the importance of traveling as an artist it's the important it's, it's important to travel so you can spread your name further you it's all about touching the people thoughts uh but it's all about networking. networking and making those um, making those unforgettable moments when, when you walk in the room and somebody meets you and they're like, yo, I met this guy named Rasta that makes music and engineers and he's based out of LA, but somehow he's in Houston right now. You know, that makes them, um, they follow you on your social <laughs> see, I see Gemini Cricket there. A little bit closer. He has an umbrella somewhere back there too, if you can see it. I got you. Go cheat. <laughs> and uh, it's essential, man. It's important. Hey, he's a little fresh. They're like back to the very bill all of Yeah. You don't see too many shoes with the pocket opener. I'm surprised when I don't see these in the DMV. These give me DMV vibes. That's what I actually made me buy it. I was like, I could see people wearing these in my city. Have they been available on DMV? It's not that I know. They probably just had a limited release. It's possible, yeah. They definitely was in a random store on Melrose with all these other random shoes. And I'm like, oh, what caught my eye was literally my guy right there. <laughs> I said, wait, the cricket. And they happen to be my size too. I said, me though. So say what, so so I need. Yeah, man, but just traveling like I, I just landed from LA today back to DC and we're celebrating music on Saturday. Oh, Friday, forget it. August the second, um, throwing out of it, and it's a listener party slash show. But it's just being just like another opportunity to touch the people, touch the fans, let them know like you know you gotta let them know we love like I love the support. So it's kind of like these these things are just made for, like it. It's a lot to keep them engaged and then for them to see the growth and then also bring new fan people to become fans at those at these shows. So I'm excited for Friday. It's gonna be super lit at Alice Lounge on the D on U Street. It's gonna be crazy. What time? Seven o'clock PM sharp. Seven to ten PM is three hour intimate listening session. Don't miss it. Free RSVP up until Friday. So and no excuses. What's one piece of advice you give an artist looking to get to where you are? 
One piece of advice. I would say I give the <clears throat> because I'm I do so many things a jack of all trades, I I would personally just tell them to follow their gut on and you know, don't wait too long to try something. Just I say, you know, do it strategically but go go at it. Go go get it. Like honestly have a mentor to look up to, someone that you can that can kind of give you some guidance and put God first and make sure he's in what you're doing. So you'll really see it blossom. This is a day in my shoes. <laughs>